So what I want to do today, I want to try and put the HW80 back together. I've got some new parts for the replacement bits that needed. Um, so what I want to do, although it's not finished, I want to put it back together again so I can at least see that it, it cycles and works um, before finishing things off because I don't really want to spend a huge amount of time and effort if I find out that actually it's, uh, it's not very good. And seeing that um, I'm not entirely sure about the chamber, and the way it screws together, I want to make sure that it is all tight and neat before uh, spending a lot of time and effort either polishing or bluing. So, what I do need to do is some of the parts that I ordered from John Nibs. Um, it's for the HW35 as well. So there's uh, bits and pieces that I think I can take off from here that I can use in the HW80 and save me buying them. So that's the plan. So the idea first is to strip this down. Um, I'll show you how to do that and then take off some of the bits and pieces from inside, replace them with the new ones that I've got, and then the bits that I've taken off can be used as spare parts for the other one. So the HW35 has been around since uh, the dinosaurs, I believe. There's uh, cave paintings of them using them. Um, they've literally been around, I think it's the longest production air rifle that's still in use now. Um, it originally came out in the 50s sometime, um, about 14 and a bit foot-pounds, I think it is. Um, but generally speaking, it's about ten and a half. It's not a high power rifle. It's not like a Magnum at all. It's got a medium build. It's about eight pounds, eight nine pounds. Um, it's quite a weighty rifle. Um, it has got what well, I bought for it. Sorry, it's got open sights. Um, it's got the insert that I'm using at the minute. I think it's number five or E. I can't remember which way they word them. Um, it's just a little post on a stick, and I find that one really helpful. Um, it is, like most modern brake barrels I suppose, um, you've got a safety catch that comes on automatically, you've got the record trigger which is really nice and adjustable, you can hang on first stage forever and then just knock it when you actually need to fire. Um, but the unique thing with the HW35 is the cocking effort, the cocking, um, instead of having to hit the barrel to break it, you actually just lift the lever and break the barrel um, and then obviously pull it through and then obviously to put it back you can either just snap it back or push it forward and load it and it's cocked again you can do it silently so I did when um, I was trying to fire the uh, 97 the other day every time I went to cock it I went to go and thumb for this lever I, apparently it's a bit of a marmite gun um, you either like it or you don't but I have to say I really like the idea that you just cock it and it's back in again. I think that's really, really good. Um, it's the only rifle that has it um, in the firearm range. I don't know if any other manufacturers have picked up on it, but I have to say I really like that. Um, I must admit when I was trying to fire the HW8 for the first couple of times, I was again trying to thumb the side of the, uh, the breech block there. But um, instead of like trying to hit it down, um, it's got a long barrel. Um, I believe it comes in a, a slightly carbine version as well. It's come in various guises in the past uh, with a walnut stock. This is the rounded original stock. Um, you get one with a bit of a thumb hole cut out in a limited edition. There's um, a Safari, which I must admit I only found out about the other day, and it does look really good. It's got a green laminate stock that was launched. Uh, KLS which has got a blue laminate stock and then you've now got the, the current one that's limited edition it's a, a grey laminate stock and stainless steel um, barrel and fixtures um, again which looks pretty good um, but yeah it's been around for donkey's years um, I put a clip up of it firing the other day when I took it down Pete's the way that um, I want to change some of the things on the internals is the fact that it sounds like a rifle when it goes off it has a real crack to it Um, I don't know if that's the piston guides or the uh, or what I don't know, but yeah, it, when it goes off, it, it goes off. It's not one for the backyard. But um, let's take it apart, change out some of the things, and uh, see if we can make it an improvement. 
One of the first things that I like about taking the, um, or the simplicity of taking the HW35 apart is this. So instead of having screws in the middle of the fore end, it's like the HW100. Um, you've got a screw at the bottom and then two on the trigger guard. You can actually swap this out for the same bolt that's on the HW100 um, and you can put a sling stud there. So instead of having to mount it on the barrel, you can actually put it there. Um, I think it just makes it nice and simple. It's quite a secure fitting rather than two that pinch the barrel. It just literally goes straight up it. And um, so yeah, I quite I think that's a nice design feature. So with the screw out, two in the trigger guard, the stock can literally just come straight off. Revealing the everything that we need. So what you need to do is you need to knock out the retaining pins, the front of the rear ones for the trigger guard. Um, and they seem to go in better one way and coming out obviously the reverse. Uh, that wasn't me. Um, so it's easier to knock them out from this side, whichever this would be on the side of the gun, um, and then pull them from that way. Literally just need a, a little punch. Once they start coming out, you just pull them out. So just tap them through. Oops, you should just be able to pull them out. The long one goes at the front, the short one goes at the back. And then this trigger guard can literally just be pulled out. Be careful because you've still got the safety in there and it's got a tiny little spring. So you don't really want to lose that. There's no spring on that, which means it's in there still. So I just need to fish that. It's the little spring. And I swear the HW8 you had one when I took it apart, and I'm absolutely buggered if I can find it now, so I had to order a new one. Four pounds. Um, I think you can use uh, one from like a big biro um, and adjust the other pens. But um, yeah, don't lose it. The other thing which you've got to be careful of is that there's a, a nut. Three pounds. I'm gonna to have to measure this because that's ridiculous. Is a, a little retaining nut which goes on the not the front screw but the rear screw of the uh, trigger guard, and it fits in there, just in there. So when you're reassembling it, you have to sort of balance it when the screw goes in. And obviously, when you take the screw out, that nut can then fly off and go missing everywhere. Um, this is the bit that's broken on the HW80 trigger. Um, and I did originally super glue that into place. Um, so I'll do that again just to make life easier because obviously it then lines up when you put the uh, the action and that back together again. Yeah. That's the record trigger, whoops, record trigger unit. It's quite a simple, uh, nice trigger actually. Cool. Nearly lost it. So next up is taking the M cap off um, and it's a big long screw, a big thread that gets screwed into the, the chamber um, and all you've got to do is literally just crack and then you can unscrew it by hand. Uh, this is the part which is obviously really loose on the HW80 um, so all you need to do is put something in there like a flat metal bar, open set of pliers um, just to jimmy it and as soon as it it cracks you can just unscrew it by hand there you go so just cracked it um, I seem to be making life difficult for myself because where I've um, I've left the front sight on and obviously you've got the um, barrel release catch if that was taken off and you just had the round cylinder it's a lot easier to grip and balance on rather than leaning on stuff but anyway it's done now so you should just be able to unscrew that by hand and then obviously be careful when it gets down to the last few threads because it is under preload. Um, you need to be careful when taking the end off with the screw in place. Right, so I've just undone it by hand. And it's on the last three or four rotations or threads. You see the spring in there. So um, what you can do is you can turn it on its end, uh, carrying unscrew. Obviously when the preload is released, 
the rifle will just kick up a little bit. Um, but what I am going to do is put it in a vise uh, or a clamp just so it can pop off and then unscrew it the rest of the way. There you go, so all unscrewed and that's off. And obviously you can then take we can take the main spring out, which I'll get a cloth for. Right, so so there's the main spring. And inside you've then got the inside you've then got the piston, which you can barely see in there. Um, obviously I can't pull it down because it's still attached to the cocking arm and I'm just gonna leave that in place. So the chamber and the assembly can sit there. And then this is what I wanted. So this is a Titan um, XS spring and it is a number four. Um, you want a number two if it's the HW80 because um, the internal diameter matches is just literally longer. Um, what I did find is that the spring that comes from factory is literally longer and I had to cut off a couple of springs and shorten it because otherwise there's just no way that that's fitting in there or it's going to be coil bound. Um, so let me show you the original factory mainspring. Right, so when I originally got the gun um, it was literally uh, power was all over the place. They reckon that when um, I picked it up the, uh, the guys at the firearm store said that it was uh, 10.5, 10.9. I've never had it that high. Um, it's always been the low 10s, mid 10s and high 9s. And then it went down to 7, 8, 9, 8, 7. It was literally all over the place. When I took it out, the mainspring was um, bent. It's slightly crooked. So I'm assuming, obviously, that's the reason for the um, change in power. So I ordered myself a TBT kit, uh, which came, and then I realised when it came that it's actually the same spring that was in it. Um, and then by the time you add the top hat and the spring guide from the kit as well, it makes the uh, spring far too long. So I looked at the calculations that they mentioned in one of the videos where you measure the distance between the top hat and the end of the um, piston tells you times it by the coil thickness, it gives you the number of coils, I cut the coils, and then I realized that I cut the spring. Far too short. Go okay, figure. Um, so I added a couple of power washers, and this was putting out, um, I don't know, I'll try and put it on the screen. Power wise, it was nice and consistent, but it obviously wasn't as powerful as it could have been, should have been. Um, but again, just nice and consistent. I have found, um, despite this one, um, that it puts out a spread of or deviation um, probably better than my PCPs. Um, they are pretty good actually, spring rifles, for a consistent power. So what I wanted to do, I wanted to upgrade this one back to factory and see if that made a difference. So this one's a bit oily. So I ordered an original Virarch mainspring. Um, this one has got it's a thinner gauge coil um, and I made the mistake thinking that this 1987 gun was a new gun and not an old gun. Um, it's the wrong spring. Um, so the original older um, HW 50, uh, 37s, the internal diameter is bigger. So this one, the guides don't fit. So I went back to the original Virock metal, not copper pipe, metal spring guide um, and it was, it was uh, down on power by about half a foot pound, maybe a pound, it was actually quite significant. Shooting nice but again I want something that's going to be firing a little bit higher than eight low nines um, in this anyway, I want it in the tens, I want it a little bit more powerful than that just so I can actually shoot out to 50-60 yards down the range. So what I then did I then got an ox mainspring, which is this one. Um, and as I say, I had to cut this down because this was far too big anyway. Um, and what I have now done, or found, is that the spring guides from TBT are too tight. Um, I need to prise this one out. So what I'm hoping to do 
is use these spring guides and top hat in the new HW80. And then I've got some Titan spring guides and top hat that I'm gonna use on this spring. And then I can just put this one back in with the, the proper fitting guides. That's the theory. This is the HW80 mainspring. This is supposedly a Viroc one as well. And when you compare it to the HW35 spring, it's actually a little bit shorter, but it's a bit thicker in the coils. And I think that's obviously where the power comes from. Um, and the internal diameter is also bigger, which I think matches the original old spring, which I should have got for that rifle anyway, which may have put the power up because it's got thicker coils. I don't know. Anyway, so it's had a multitude of things in this gun and hopefully I can cobble something together. So that's the, the one for the HW18 for later. So what I want to do is take these two off and fit the new guides to the um, Titan mainspring. So after a little bit of jiggling and poking, um, this is the TBT Delrin kit. Uh, top hat and then you get a couple of power boosters and um, by the time you put those on um, it supposedly gives you about a coil back or so um, the theory behind the spring the length of spring the number of coils apparently is very simple but it's not the calculations to work out the compression and then obviously the power that it's going to provide back um, so whether a, a stiff short spring is better than a long main main spring with less coils so even if you cut coils out it gives you more power it, it, there's some form of witchcraft in it and um, I don't know bloody trial and error if you ask me but there you go anyway so that gives you a bit of power back um, so looking at the <laughs> looking at the uh, the one that I got from John Nibs um, it looks like it's the same bloody spacer The top hat's shorter. Uh, power bands look the same. Might be a little bit thicker on this one. I've got some uh, calipers. Um, but the diameter of this, it might need to be sanded down a bit because as I say, when that went in, the idea is that everything can rotate freely and uh, it's quite a bit of a push. Um, damn it. Oh well. Put it together and see if we can make it work. So now comes the tricky bit of getting this back into there. Well this bit's easy. It literally just fits in there. Job done. So what I need to do is put the safety catch in with the spring um, and then line this up so it all is in the correct orientation. Important thing to do with the record trigger is to make sure it's cocked because otherwise you can fit it all together and then when you cock the gun it won't cock. So you need to get it orientated, fire it off, and then we can see if it loads and cocks. Right, so that actually went together the first time. Jiminy Crickets. Um, didn't manage to super glue that bolt in space because the super glue's gone hard, so hopefully managed to balance it and put it in. So now to see if it works and cocks, and then if it does, I'll take these out and I'll um, lock tight them in. <laughs> 